I'm going now to the U.S. I'll, I'll only do five minutes. We've got most of the time. But I just wanted to go through some U.S. groups. Sex Workers Outreach Project, this is a march we had in Washington this year. Swap USA, if you want to join it or get on the mailing list and find out about sex worker rights, go to swapusa.org. I can tell you about it after. And uh, swap, swapusa.org started in 2003 with a ballot initiative to decriminalize prostitution in Peru. But Swap organized a national organization in the United States. And we have chapters in cities all over the country. We have various kinds of mostly political demonstrations. And this was just an example of the Stop Shaming of Staff. The main uh, thing that Swap does is the International Day and Violence Against Sex Workers, December 17. With the idea being that as long as it's illegal, we can't protect ourselves from rape. We have to work on their ground. And I myself was raised where I worked. I worked at the massage parlor, and that's what made me really think that we shouldn't be sitting stuck. You know, can't call the police and get raped because you're afraid your friends are going to get, you know, the place will be closed down. You're afraid the police will maybe investigate you later. Really dedicated me and central to the sex and this outreach project as well, as you read here, is an articulation as our right, you know, only right can stop the world. And that is a slogan from the great Indian organization, Nirvana Mandelia Samad Life. Only rights can stop the world. I think that's really very beautiful. Another organization is Desiree Alliance. And um, that's very close to SWAP. It's more of an academic organization that puts on policy too. But it's pretty the same people, more academic than I. In Europe, as I told you in 1985, they had a European conference and they produced a charter. In 2005, the European, they had, a Europe, they had an international conference in Europe. This time they had a European conference. They didn't want to pursue They have a huge document. And they have something called the Declaration of Rights, which enumerates the international law in the UN. And you can look up what your country signs on to and figure out which prostitutes' rights laws are against the, the, the ratified UN charter, international laws that your country is supposed to pay attention to. And you can use that to take them to court and force them to change the laws. So it's kind of a tool. Did you ever hear that? Very cool. And I would not be shocked to see U.S. courts recognize it in the U.S. Well, they signed on to it. They have uh, to. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. They have to when somebody has a gun and points it at you. That's when you have they to. They don't recognize it, but it's a nice idea. Nobody, it's not very helpful, but it's good. This was just abolished discrimination. And this is their website, which, you know, I can tell you where it is. I did you know, but I just wanted to give you a feeling where they have resources to talk about their conferences, they organize, um, they have a lot of events, and they organize conferences all over Europe, and they support uh, all kinds of European sex companies. And I think I will kind of with this, uh, to the store down now, I'm going to really just go through this quickly. Trafficking. Somebody else talk about trafficking. I don't have to talk about it. It's very important. Can I just do the trap thing? All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, Swedish. I'm sorry. Trafficking. There's two anti-trafficking organizations. One is for my sex and the life, and one completely against prostitution. So there are two different analyses. From a sex worker rights perspective, they want more rights for migrants, more rights for sex workers. From an anti-prostitution perspective, they want to use the anti-trafficking laws to criminalize prostitution as much as possible. Hopefully, they say, but it's not even true, but they say they want to mostly criminalize the science. But that remains to be seen. I'm not even sure. But anyway, that's the thing. So, um, so these 
all kinds of analyses have been at war around the world. The anti-trafficking movement has sometimes been very problematic all over the world. Women in Cambodia are up in arms because they just made prostitution illegal in order to protect them from trafficking. And now they're being arrested and there's more police abuse. So, you know, we see, I mean, there's five prostitutes, five different prostitutes unions in Cambodia. So it's great that you get this organized, but this is to such a large extent because of the U.S. And one of the most destructive things, because of the anti-trafficking policies, President Bush said that any country that you can't get U.S. foreign aid, U.S. AID is called, aid, unless you sign something that says that you're, uh, your organization signs something that says you're opposed to prostitution. Like the global gag order around abortion, do you know about that? Well, Obama got rid of that, right? But he didn't get rid of the prostitution one yet. We're working on it. So there's one that says unless you're totally against prostitution, you can't have prostitutes. Well, that's a huge problem because the sex worker rights organizations are helping the prostitutes. And that's around uh, trafficking or around um, HIV. So, I mean, this is the short version. On the, inter on the national level, every time there's a reauthorization, which I think is every two or three years, they try to make prostitution a federal crime. They try to actually criminalize prostitution on a federal basis, so we don't even have any more power to make it in the states. And that is something, that's what we're fighting right now. They have very little success with that. But who knows, if they can come and do it every year, and that's what we're struggling with now. You know, at the same time we're trying to get rid of the pledge, anti-prostitution pledge. And the newest thing amongst the pro-rights informed sex workers movement is to look at the human rights impact of anti-trafficking laws around the world. So they, they develop a needs assess, uh, an assessment tool to look at how these anti-trafficking laws are actually working to make life harder for immigrants and sex workers. And, and then the last thing, Swedish law. So there's an international movement to where prostitution is legal to start criminalizing the clients by the anti-prostitution act. Now, it wouldn't be so horrible, in my mind, if they went where prostitution was illegal and decriminalized the sex workers first. I mean, but no, they go around the world wherever prostitution is legal and they try to make it more criminal. This whole idea of like only criminalizing clients is not really applied to um, situations like ours. I'm not saying that it's a good idea because it certainly makes business more dangerous for sex workers if their business is suddenly illegal. So that's the other front that we're concerned with. And that's it. I think I'm sorry I, I went on a bit long. No, you were fine. And I, no, I went so everybody, everybody loves you. you know.